Good morning on day 166 of the fellowship. No, nope, I wasn't here for day 155. Um, we had quite quite a number of really exciting research sprints during the week, Monday to Thursday, getting bits of software finished, tying off revisions to papers. After those sprints, I was um, I was running on fumes on Friday, so I got the last of the stuff done. Um, had some out of work conversations about a uh, upcoming book, and then up the road to the family. Um, no recording, no steam for it. But here we are, Monday morning. I'm good to go. Day one hundred and sixty six, and today, what I want to share is a thought that occurred to me on the road in this morning because I was sitting on the bus reading a textbook and the thought occurred to me to share today because, and here's your background, here's the dressing of the table. A lot of what's going on in my fellowship, and I think an increasing number of fellowships, I dare say, is that the research is a buzzword alert, multidisciplinary. It's at the edge of one discipline and another where some things are obvious to people on one side of the fence, but it's completely innovative to those on the other side of that same fence. But the double-edged sword with doing something as exciting as research between disciplines is the fact that it requires a hell of a lot of energy and uphill struggle to get yourself in a position to be able to speak both languages of both disciplines at the same time in order to push forward at the bleeding edge between those disciplines to create something new. And so on the road in this morning, I was reading a textbook really to try to service that challenge. I was trying to very much get myself in the way of speaking a new language, so reading different parts of computer science, which aren't really traditionally part of my training as a chemist, but that which I now need to know in intimate detail for the research that we as a team are trying to push forward. And I need to know in intimate detail to then give others in the team the confidence that they can do exactly the same thing, even if they're not trained in that way. Um, a classic that I always hear, especially at perhaps senior undergraduate level when you're starting to talk to students more about what they might do. The classic that keeps coming back is, I'm not trained in X, therefore I can't do Y. I don't have a degree or a class or a qualification in A, and therefore I, I could never, ever possibly do B. That's complete and utter nonsense. And if you stop there, that wouldn't ever get the message across. And if you said it, said that, to those struggling with such um, self-confidence issues, the message wouldn't ever get across. It would probably do the opposite and scare them further into the rut of thinking they could never do anything. But there are baby steps that all of us can take towards thinking, actually, do you know what? I probably could do this. I just need to take much smaller steps than I ever thought were possible. I don't need to go at breakneck speed. But if I do this sort of thing daily, even for 15 minutes a day, small, tiny baby steps, then maybe I can get into a way of thinking, it's not going to be easy for me to move out of a training in A and contribute in B. But I can get there, and here's how. So circling all the way back to what I was doing this morning, it was reading a textbook on the way into work because I was trying to get myself up to speed. Now, the point of all of this is to say, uh, this is probably especially to academics who want to keep up to date with everything. I've just completely revised and renewed my love of textbooks because the message is this. Textbooks will not keep you up to date, but they can get you up to speed. Textbooks won't keep you up to date, but they can get you up to speed. So textbooks are just, that they're very, in most ways, different from publications. It's not the same incentive um, to get, you know, tons of citations or into certain journals or, you know, to satisfy a certain evaluation type um, for you and your institution. 
it is very much more, I'd say for the most part, a distilled educational focus where it's a rounded, summarized message of a field as it was understood around the time of writing that textbook. So that's not to say that those textbooks can become completely out of date, old fashioned and no longer relevant. I don't think that's the point. If you're reading a relatively contemporary textbook, that's what can serve to get you up to speed in a new discipline or speaking a new scientific language without the, I dare say, the burden, the unnecessary pressure of thinking you have to keep up to date. It's not the point to see what did someone publish in this area yesterday? Who's the big name driving this field forward today? It might actually be the same person who wrote the textbook or people who wrote the textbook, who knows? But the consideration here is to always look at a textbook as a means with which you can put yourself into the bubble of a discipline that's not normally yours and get the bare bones of it. Start to understand how people talk about certain phenomena, what the acronyms are, what the terminology is, what the jargon is that might otherwise scare you away if you hear someone talking about it who isn't taking the time or doesn't have the time to explain all the fundamental building blocks of what makes up that discipline. So use a textbook to get up to speed, not to keep up to date. And it's therein that you can start to take more manageable, less intimidating baby steps towards working between disciplines rather solely in one or another. And who knows, it might be that with your fresh perspective coming from one discipline into another, you might start to see things in a different way that no one in that other discipline currently sees things. And in fact, reading the textbook might serve a secondary purpose because as well as getting you up to speed, you might spot chronological flaws and thinking that have built up over a long period of time in which you can say, ah, Here's an early mistake where people have started thinking along this line and that's built up and built up and built up to the point of things like the textbook I'm reading now. Maybe if we take several steps back and think about this slightly differently, we can take a field that seems on the surface stuck or at a plateau and keep it on the rise, get it out of a rut towards completely new understanding for those trying to push that field forward. So a textbook will get you up to speed, it won't keep you up to date, but it might just turn you in to a pioneer of something new in that field. So consider what textbooks you might read to get you up to speed in a field that you're interested in, but might be too scared to step into at this time. Have a great day. Hopefully see you tomorrow. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, head over to the website where not only will you find the written blog versions of these podcasts, you'll find my leadership blog series, the daily thought series, and information about my book on managing the imposter phenomenon. We also have even more free resources and webinars linked to the YouTube channel. So head on over to Dr. Dash mark dash read dot com. That's D R dash mark with a C dash R E I D dot com.